Welcome to this Clear Vision webinar on how to build a free software configuration and change management or SCCM system. Typically, SCCM systems are used to control the full software development lifecycle. However, aspects of the solution are equally applicable to other areas of your business, such as document management and issue and risk management. Over the next 40 minutes, we will look at the drivers behind why you would want a free SDCM system and how you can benefit from the open source revolution to build one. I'll focus on the traditional components of an SDCM system and then look at the freely available tools which provide the functionality required to form a complete, capable SDCM solution. We will then look at an example system and how it can work in some real world examples. Finally, I will wrap up the webinar with an explanation of how ClearVision can assist you and your business to design, implement and support a free SCCM system. Okay, let's start by defining what I mean when I talk about free software within the context of this webinar. There are two main types of free software, open source and free software. Open source and free software or software Libre both describe software which is free from onerous licensing restrictions. It may be used, copied, studied, modified and redistributed without restriction. Free software is often summed up by the phrase free as in free speech, not free as in free beer. Open source has been generalized as software for which the source code is available. These are oversimplifications and there are many different license types, each with their own usage policies. The definition of open source software was written to be almost identical to the free software definition. There are very few cases of software that is free software but is not open source, and vice versa. The difference in the terms is where they place the emphasis. Free software is defined in terms of giving the user freedom. This reflects the goal of the free software movement. Open source highlights that the source code is viewable to all, and proponents of the term use usually emphasize the quality of the software and how this is caused by the development models which are possible and popular among free and open source software projects. And in most cases the difference is more one of the philosophy rather than actual physical restriction. In the terms of this webinar I use the terms interchangeably and the onus is on you the listener to check the individual license terms of any software mentioned here to see how it does apply in your own circumstances. Why a free system? The obvious answer as to why you'd want a free SCCM solution is the cost saving. Not just in terms of the initial outlay for commercial tool licenses, but the longer term total cost of ownership, which tends to quickly run into significant amounts. Please note, the purpose of this webinar is not to denigrate commercial offerings, which certainly have a place in the market and still have several advantages over a free solution. However, Often the feature-rich nature of the applications provides unnecessary complexity for the needs of your organization. In fact, it is quite common for teams to use only a fraction of the functionality available to them from their enterprise level tools. Effectively, they are paying a premium for limited benefit. Organizations are constantly looking to reduce operating costs and to ensure they are as efficient and ultimately as profitable as possible. Reducing software costs can provide an area for substantial saving, especially when you are considering products which are used by hundreds, sometimes thousands of users. There is much more to TCO, total cost of ownership, than just the license cost and ongoing maintenance. The general perception is that free or open source software TCO is lower. Some of the reasons for this, no purchase costs or ongoing maintenance fees. A reduction in administration costs as no overhead in having to track and manage licenses. A claimed reduced need for regular upgrades, giving lower to nil upgrade fees, lower management costs. Reduced need for specialist administrators, although you will typically need some administration function. Community support, reducing the need for heavy duty support contracts. Reduced training costs, streamlined software for specific functions designed and developed by end users, not marketing teams, is often easier to learn and use. 
claimed ability to prolong life of older hardware while retaining performance. Open source is developed in the community, and often the developers do not have the luxury of the latest kit, so tend to be more focused on the performance side of things. There is no definitive proof this is true for all free software. Each camp makes its own claims, and often have an obvious bias. However, many of the arguments are compelling, and specifically in the world of SCCM, you can create a free system that has a far lower TCO than the big-named commercial products. But it's not just a choice of one or the other. ClearVision specialises in creating and implementing hybrid solutions to integrate existing commercial applications with open source products. This enables you to reuse existing or extend existing legacy systems, but gain the flexibility and agility of free software products. ClearVision have developed several products to help organisations achieve this. Um, two of our main examples are a CC to SVM bridge, which provides a bi-directional sharing of file systems between Rational Clear Case and Subversion, and CQ to SVN, which extends Rational Clear Quest to work with the Subversion version control system to provide, again, bi-directional integration. OK, how does this all come about? Ironically, the original software model for computing was open source. The early days of commercial computing in the 1960s saw IBM bundling free software with its machines. This included the source code and was able to be shared and modified by its users. In the 1970s, IBM unbundled its software and the proprietary model quickly became the norm. Restricted licenses prohibiting sharing and modification and the source code was no longer available. This model prevails up to today, but is now being firmly challenged by the open source movement. The resurgence of open source software as a viable alternative can arguably be said to have been led by Linus Torvald's Linux kernel. Whilst its roots date back to the late 70s and early 80s with the GNU project and its public license and manifesto, stating that availability of source code and freedom to redistribute and modify software are fundamental rights. It was not until the Linux release that open source hit the mainstream in a big way and formed part of the zeitgeist of high quality open source development throughout the 1990s, giving us the full Linux operating system with the more user friendly GUI desktops such as GNOME and KDE, and the Apache web server, amongst other Apache projects, Perl interpreted language, Mozilla web browser project, and many, many more. The revolution is now well underway, and UK government reports predict that 50% of the software infrastructure market could be taken by open source software, and that whilst Windows still has the dominant position in the Western desktop operating systems market, this is not the case in the emerging or developing world, where open source is taking the dominant position. Open source is now with us and with us to stay, with all facets of the software industry now providing viable open source options. OK, well, what is SCCM? There are several definitions of software configuration and change management, most being variations on a theme. Here we'll use the more traditional four component model to describe SCCM. Configuration identification, Configuration control, status accounting, audit and verification. Configuration identification is about what code are we working with, formal recognition of the configuration items to control and the level of control to apply to them. Configuration control, controlling the release of a product and its changes, controlling access to and changes being made to code. Often utilizing parallel development via branching and merging strategies. Branching being the ability to split development of the same code into discrete areas to support multiple releases at the same time. Merging is the action whereby branches are integrated back into a single development area. Status accounting is the recording and reporting on the status of all the components and configuration items. Audit and verification ensuring completeness and consistency among components and traceability of changes. Change management is a more detailed level of control over the changes to your configuration items, and depending on the formality of your organization, will involve internal and external change control boards, formal reviews of changes, and essentially a means of moving 